Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markey of Living Streams International, bringing you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. Um, we would like to apologize for uh, repeating a couple of our old sermons or old sermonettes. I also want to thank the La Beach um, Hotel Management for granting us their premises in order for us to use their premises for this broadcast to you. Just bringing change and change of environment. Everybody needs change, one way or the other. Now, this morning, I'd like to uh, capture my thoughts with the words, Sankofa stones. Sankofa stones. You know, Sankofa is our, it's, it's our old, uh, it's an ancient, um, uh, this thing of Ghanaians, uh, parlance of Ghanaians, or a language of Ghanaians. That means go back and pick it up. Go back and pick it up. Sankofa stones, that is go back and pick it up. You know, or going back to pick it up. So you see the, the Sankofa um, bed is a bed with a neck, bent all the way back I mean picking something from its feathers or something like that so but this morning I like to capture this thoughts of mine in the in the story of Gideon do you remember in, in Judges chapter 6 and chapter 7 when God met Gideon especially in Judges chapter 6 when God met Gideon one of the most prominent things about Gideon that he said out loud he says listen um, my family is the poorest in the whole of Manasseh and I am the least. I am the least in terms. Of, so in terms of poverty, Gideon was saying that, look here, I, I am in, uh, uh, my family is in a terrible uh, uh, street and I'm in dark streets. I mean, mine is more serious than everybody else. Now, this was the accession of Gideon. And so if you, if you remember, and then for God to do something in the life of Gideon, in the life of, of, of Israel at that time, because they were under the yoke of the Midianites. The Bible said that God told uh, Gideon that, listen, there is a reason for the poverty in your family. There's a reason for, for, for all the hardship that they're going through. It's because of idolatry. And guess what, Gideon? The, the stone of idolatry or the altars of idolatry are in your home. Your father has altars in his home. And so the, the cause of warfare, the cause of distress, the cause of pain, the cause of desperation, the cause of Israel's depression was because Gideon, it was just simply because there was an altar in Gideon's house. So God asked Gideon to break it down. And in Gideon breaking down that altar, dealing with that particular altar, dealing with that uh, situation that, that makes uh, certain disasters recurrent and all those things, that introduces hardship, that introduces pain, that introduces disaster. God said to Gideon, go back to the roots and pluck up the tree by its roots and kill the tree by its roots. That was a subtle command of, of, of God. And when Gideon pulled down the altar, one of the contributing factors of Gideon's victory over the Midianites was the pulling down of the altar. Now guess what? After Gideon had won the victory, after Gideon had had success, the Bible says the people of Israel came and they said to Gideon, you know what, become our king. He said, no, 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 I don't want the king. I like the offering. He said, I don't want the title. I, I, I like the prosperity. I don't like the offering. I like the wealth. I don't like the uh, uh, accolades and the applause. I want the wealth that comes with it. Because see where I'm coming from. I'm coming from a place of poverty. So I want the gold and I want the silver. And the Bible says the people readily agreed. And they brought Gideon the gold and the silver. Now, to my utter surprise and amazement, the Bible says Gideon sold a skirt. He, he did a skirt, an effort, with the, with the gold and hung it upon a tree. And he began to worship it. And the Bible says the whole of Israel, the weather was used there. The whole of Israel's heart went a whoring after, after the, the, the uh, golden skirt. So guess what? Gideon began by pulling down altars and he ended by building an altar. Gideon began by pulling down idolatry and he ended with putting up idolatry. 
And guess what? This stone of idolatry became a rock of offense for the whole of Israel, and it also became a rock of offense for Gideon's family. Thereafter, you hear of disasters, you hear of this thing. So guess, Gideon was used by God to shut the door for the whole of Israel and for his family to kill the curse of poverty in his family. God used Gideon to shut the door. And Gideon, the person that God used to shut the door, rather ended up opening that same door that he had shut. So guess what? Gideon introduced the very thing, that the first thing that God said to him, pull down idolatry. And he ended up committing the whole of Israel, and of course his family, to idolatry. And the recompense and the judgment for that was his, his, his children, people assassinating each other, and all those other things. Chaos was introduced, reintroduced back into his family. What a travesty. What, what, what a sad event. You, you, you know, you were sent to, to break something down, and then in the end, you erected it. So there are certain warfares that sometimes God raises us up as his children and as warriors in our, in our families and in our, in our particular nation. And we are the people who are supposed to break down that altar and could be many different, different altars. I mean, could be altars, there are many that come out flying at the top of my head. But because of time constraints, I can go into them. There are altars of poverty. There are altars of, 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 of uh, uh, divorce. There are altars, different, 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 different altars. And sometimes God raises us up to, 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 to break down those things. And then sometimes we become the doorway by which the things that we have defeated, the things that we have broken down, we erect those things and we open the doors for generations after us to suffer after us. You know what? There are some stones you don't need to go back for them. There are some stones that fathers and mothers and all those things don't go back for them. You are the cutoff point. You are the place where God says enough is enough. So you are the harbinger of good news for your family. Please, don't go build up those altars again. Your family will pay a price. Well, it's a choice. I can't force the issues. So, see you later.